I'm gonna change it up a little bit. I'm not gonna give you my top 10. What I'm gonna give you is the top, my top 10 most influential games to me. Growing up, what got me hooked on certain systems, what got me into video games. My first number one that I got on my list is Super Mario Brothers. It is such a classic that probably about 90% of the world has played that game one time or another. Some have liked it, some don't. For me, to play that game, to immerse yourself as this Mario character that could jump on things and destroy them and move on from level to level, once you find all your hidden shortcuts and all of your other ways of traveling the world, you get better and better at it, but you never become an expert. Now, my next one on my list is a game that introduced me to the RPG series. And it was my first one I ever played, and it was the one that I played the most, and that was Final Fantasy III here in America, or Final Fantasy VI in Japan. With this game, for me, it was so in-depth, and the story was so complete that when you played the game, you felt what the characters felt. You felt their demise when the espers started to come down. You felt happiness with them. You felt sorrow with them. The opera scene that is in that game is probably one of the best musical numbers in a video game still to this day. But yet then to have the power to overthrow a probably one of the greatest villains in an RPG, which is Kefka, and one of the most deranged villains in an RPG, it, made, it completed the story in the saga so well that you you felt like you were with it. Next on my list for number three is going to be Rock and Roll Racing for the Super Nintendo. Rock and Roll Racing for me was not only racing, but it was rock and roll. You had the tunes that were popular. So you had like your George Thiro Good and your all these other artists. And it was, so it was cool to race to these music, but the game was also intriguing and fun and pulled you in. You go from planet to planet, racetrack to racetrack. You upgraded your vehicle. You made it stronger. You made it more firepower. And when you take that nosedive off that track and into the abyss, you're like, oh God, it's over. Because you knew that it went too fast and you couldn't catch up. Number four of my influential games for me is Skyrim. First, yes, Oblivion, Morrowind, Daggerfall, and all of them were fun games. But Skyrim is where I got sucked into to where I wanted to keep playing it just to find what's out there to find the little piece of bread that's under the counter to go find the bar winch that will put out who knows everything was possible in that game it's a hard grave yes which which happened to be one of the best quests and i call that quest the hangover quest where you marry the hard grave if you don't know what i'm talking about look it up he will put links down below for that. Number five on my list. For me, this is what really introduced me to multiplayer. I didn't have a lot of, I didn't have siblings growing up, so I always played a lot of solo players. But this game opened it up to my friends and everything else for me. And that was Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 4, Turtles in Time. And with that one, you're able to select any turtle you want. You didn't have to be Leonardo, the dipshit Michelangelo. You can be Don Rath. Too bad you couldn't be Splinter, though. However, Turtles in Time was still looks good to this day, actually, if you're playing it. You don't, you don't feel like you're not in that arcade where you originally played this game. You feel like you're still there. And it was so much fun and it took you so many places and the time that you and your friends spend playing this game together will bring you guys closer and as you notice a lot of my games on my list are from older systems because i am an older gentleman 
And those were the ones that influenced me in my gaming situations. Like this next one on my list is from the is from the NES, and that is Marble Madness. To take a marble and just to try to get it to a goal seems simple, but when you're taking that marble down a path that it barely fits on without trying to fall off this path using a four-directional D-pad, it's challenging, very challenging. And there, that was the fun in the game, was the challenge. Was, can how fast can you get the marble to the finish and can your buddy beat you? That was Marble Madness. Next on my list is probably one of my newer games that I have on my list. And that was WWF Raw for the Xbox. And for me, what made that so great was the original Xbox, you were able to copy CDs to the hard drive. So you can listen to music while you play. However, this game took it one step further and said, you can use your CDs or your downloaded music for your entrance music. And this was the first game, wrestling game to ever do that. And for me, that put me right in the game. Cause here I came, mean, woo, Gene. And then next on my list is my other newer game. And I just found this one recently, even though it's an older game, I just recently found it. So the game that introduced me to tactical games and the strategy side of video games was XCOM. And with the current release of XCOM 2, which just builds upon the original. That game right there showed me how to play as a team in a video game. It showed me if I put this person here, how's that gonna affect the rest of my team? Um, one miss rock move, and you could lose four of your five members in one turn. Now, I have two more games left on my influencer list. And they're going to be older games. A lot of you have probably never heard of them. The, the people that are watching this that are a little bit older probably have. And the first one up on my list is the Leisure Suit Larry series. And who doesn't love trying to be Larry and trying to get laid? Because, granted, that was the game. But back when we were kids, games, this was unheard of in video games. And trying to go around and trying to get laid, but you get this close and it never happens though. And they did such a great job of making it into a video game that it blows your mind and other things. Now, along the lines of Leisure Suit Larry, my last game here is also along the lines of that. But for me, for this one, this was the very first video game I ever played. This was the game where I learned how to play video games, pretty much how to read and everything else. Because I was a little boy when I played this game. And it is Monkey Island. This and Monkey Island 2 brought everything together for me. That's what showed me, hey, video games are fun. Video games are entertaining. There are little movies you control. And it was something that gave me pride because to this day, I still have not beat either one of those because I don't want to look at nothing up. I don't want to cheat. I want to do it on my own. I still haven't been able to, but I try. So thank you for listening to my influential games of my life. All I can say is like, comment down below. Let us know what video we should we do next. Should we have something where we talk about, I don't know, I'm just rambling now. <laughs> but yeah, like, comment down below. Thank you very much. Have a great day. And woo!